Good afternoon and welcome to this lunchtime's session about ghost buses. Um, we are having this on Halloween because, uh, you know, it seemed appropriate. Um, we are recording this session so you can share it with colleagues that can't be with us live. Um, of course, as ever, we welcome uh, questions and things like that while we're going along. If you put stuff in the chat, then we can pick them up at the end when we have the Q&A um, and we can uh, have a discussion at that point. So um, what are we going to have a look at? Um, we're going to have a look at this afternoon. Uh, what is a ghost bus? Um, is it? big problem how big a problem is it um what are uh, some of the causes um and what might some of the solutions might be and then as i say we'll uh, jump into uh questions and uh, uh find out what your views are now one thing i'm going to say is that um this is not going to tackle a lot of the things that we talked about um, a few weeks ago in a session on uh, why information is different between different systems. Uh, this is looking very specifically at um, the issue around ghost buses, um, but a lot of similar themes uh, are picked up in that session. Um, that recording is available along with the slides uh, on YouTube and the Arctic website. Um, so please do uh, have a look at that um, when you get a chance as well, because it covers, as I say, a lot of the similar sort of topics. So um, what is um, a ghost bus? I think it's the first thing to um, pick up on. Um, so um, definition that I quite like is that it's uh, information about a journey which for which a bus then doesn't appear at the customer location typically that would be a service is shown predicting you know on somebody's app or electronic display um, and the bus uh, apparently never appears to arrive at the stop um, it's not a bus that's pretending to be a ghost or done up as ghost buses as this North East, go northeast uh, buses and it's trundling around at the moment like that uh, which i thought was quite cute um but um it is a significant problem um in the uk um they've been multiple uh, press articles and um TV segments on local news and things like that about the problem. Um, the West Yorkshire mayor uh, is kept up at night um, by worrying about it. Um, Bristol seems to have had an awful lot of coverage about it and the problems there, but it, it appears uh, as a problem everywhere. Um, and um, People try and spend lots of money trying to tackle this problem by buying new technology equipment and things like that. Um, but as we'll see, it's not necessarily uh, something that actually spending cash on equipment is going to necessarily solve. Um, it's not just a UK problem either. Um, all over the world, um, over the last couple of years, uh, there's been... Uh, problems um, and a lot of people talking about uh, how to solve it and customers complaining uh, America Australia um, and um, there's been an awful lot of coverage in Dublin over the last few months for those of you that keep track of uh, of, of news um, to the extent that um, there is a specific website where you can go on and uh, report your no-showing bus uh, online and that's all then collected and reported to um, uh, the Transport Authority in Dublin. Um, so it's not just a UK problem. Um, it's one of those um, problems that has been around 
from my experience for many, many years um, since the introduction of uh, real time systems. Um, but it's one of those where because up till now there's been often bigger issues, bigger data issues and uh, technology issues, people are sort of overcoming those and beginning to be able to uh, rely on them, get used to the fact that you know you can get a countdown time to when your bus is going to arrive. Um, and most of the time that works, but they're beginning to go, actually that bus never arrived. It will have always been the same, um, but because everything else is getting more reliable and a lot of the other issues are being resolved, it's coming more and more to the fore. So um, it's not a problem that um, there is a single solution to. There are lots of reasons for uh, ghost buses um, appearing or not appearing, I should say, um, manifesting themselves. Um, we'll uh, we'll have a look at uh, some of these as we uh, as we go through. Uh, today so everything from vehicles not tracking to staffing issues to data issues to customers not quite understanding what they're seeing a um, whole range of different reasons and uh, and causes for it so um, first one uh, that we'll have a look at is um, vehicles that aren't tracked so um, just to remind you to be able to create a prediction uh, on a screen so that it shows the countdown um, you need to be able to know exactly which journey a bus is on and be able to compare that data and match it up with the timetable so you know where it should be um, versus where it is at the moment so you can create a prediction now if you can't track that vehicle you don't know where it is for um, a range of technology issues um, you know you might not have a working uh, modem so it's not being able to communicate its location you might have a data issue um, where actually um, the information that the driver has put into the ticket machine doesn't match with uh, what you've got in the back office um, that's all going to cause a vehicle to be not tracked um, and um, you might be going through increasingly uh, a black spot in the mobile phone coverage um, as 3g switches off we're seeing more and more areas of dead spots and things like that that will mean that the vehicle will appear to be coming um, having a countdown time uh, it'll go into a black spot for a long time it'll stop being predicted and then uh, it'll suddenly jump to being predicted um, but behind um, those sort of problems um, there are issues with um, the bus not being cancelled in um, operational systems you know it might be physically cancelled might not be a driver there might not be a vehicle to run a particular journey um, if that's not cancelled in real-time systems then it's going to show as a uh, timetable time depending on how you've got your systems configured um, passenger will be sat there at the bus stop waiting for it to arrive uh, it'll be on the display it'll be on their apps um, and then it'll just disappear when that uh, time has passed, it'll clear down, but the bus was never ever going to arrive because it's not running. Um, so that's a reason for making sure that um, you cancel journeys that aren't running. Um, bus might have broken down um, part way along a route. So, you know, it's been predicting and then it stops and it never turns up because uh, it's broken down. Um, you need to make sure you're cancelling journeys, um, part journeys when they're broken down, or for example, you're turning them short because you know you need to for timekeeping reasons or something like that. Um, might have a, a a diversion, might be unplanned, um, you know, might be burst water main or something like that, and so the bus is having to uh, to go round a stop. 
Um, if the timetables uh, in back office aren't updated, then um, you're not going to get that vehicle passing that individual stop. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure what you can do about that because you're always going to get short notice changes. Um, so you're never going to be able to keep all of the diversion data up to date. So you then need to rely on messages probably to uh, to to address that. So making sure you've got easy and ready access to uh, put messages on uh, displays and importantly, the apps that customers are going to be using um, quite a lot of the time. So. Um, and um, if um, the bus um, is untracked, um, but running late, um, later than a customer might um, expect, you know, if it's 10 minutes late, somebody might have given up. Um, so uh, they might class that as a ghost bus because it's not shown up, um, but actually it is. It's just uh, so late that, uh, that you know, you've decided it's not actually going to come, but it still does. Um, then, um, so you might um, have a bus that you've got all the technology working, um, you know, it's reporting in its position, but as I said a bit ago, um, drivers put in the wrong information into the ticket machine, they're human, um, so you're going to get errors. Um, that means that data is not going to match. You're not going to get predictions. Um, so uh, making sure in your ticket machines or whatever it is the driver is signing on to to uh, create a prediction, uh, making sure that there's as much error checking as possible in there. If you've got dispatchers in a control room, if they are keeping an eye on what's going on, they can see a journey not being matched and they can maybe intervene themselves or contact the driver to get them to uh, to enter the correct details. Um, poor quality logons um, happens um, more often than um, we might like to admit in the industry. Um, you know, it's inevitable that the driver will, particularly if they're running late, um, towards the end of um a journey you know they're not going to be picking people up they're not going to need to be um issuing tickets you know they're going to book up on to the next journey on the ticket machine before they've um got to the end of the last route so that as soon as they get to the that last stop and which is the first stop of the next journey uh passengers are going to be able to start to board and uh sell tickets um, you know, customers are very eager to get onto vehicles, particularly when they're late. You know, they get quite irritated if they're stood in the uh, in the vestibule waiting for a driver to uh, to log on. So, drivers inevitably are going to try and avoid that and log on too early. Um, that causes uh, lots of challenges with real time, um, of course, and um, will cause uh, some ghost busing as well. Um, We've talked about um, uh, diversions briefly, um, but um, real-time systems work by um, trying to identify where the bus is against where it should be. Um, and if it sees that a bus is too far off where it should be um, for too long, then it's going to drop a prediction and go back to schedules on signs and apps and things like that um, and so um, a customer even if um, it's going to be uh, actually passing the stop is going to see it drop into a prediction and therefore assume that um, something's gone wrong with that journey and it's probably not going to show up um, and um, planned journeys not operating so you know a whole host of reasons and you know, everything from uh, from weather, so uh, flooding an increasing problem, uh, you know, unable to get to where you might uh, expecting to be, you know, snow, another common cause. Um, but um, over the last few years, there's been the uh, the driver shortage um, that we've been uh, struggling with, um, and um, where you don't have drivers uh, available, 
then of course the journey's not going to uh, to run. Um, you do get some drivers that like dressing up at this time of year. Um, it's always good and fun to see. Um, but if you haven't got the driver um, on a uh, uh, on a changeover in particular, um, then um, you know you will get predictions for part of the route. There's then no driver. It's going to be uh, cut short. Um, and so therefore stops afterwards, they're, they're not going to ever be visited. And so uh, they would appear on the screens um, and you're not going to get a bus. Um, it's a particular problem um, where you've got driver changeovers um, partway along a route, um, particularly where you've got cross city journeys, for example, uh, driver might change in the center because that's convenient. Um, so you'll see uh, journey predicting and then it'll drop off uh, as part of the uh, the driver changeover. Um, it seems to be less of a problem where routes start in the centre because, of course, it's never going to have uh, predicted if you haven't got a driver for it. Um, so um, very much linked to that is um, where you've got cross journey predictions. So that's where... Um, you know what the bus is supposed to be doing next, so you can start to uh, predict when it's going to arrive at stops uh, along the journey, the next journey it's about to do before it's started. Um, very useful from a customer point of view. Um, needs uh, really tight management of data to make sure you've got accurate, up-to-date running boards. Um, a whole different uh, topic there to uh, to talk about, um, but um, where you are providing cross journey predictions, uh, if you haven't got that driver, you're not going to get that second journey uh, happening, and so uh, it's going to appear as though it's uh, it's it's never arrived um, when they were expecting it. Even if a customer is savvy enough to understand the difference between a a real-time countdown uh, and a clock-faced time. Um, not everybody does, um, but if they are, then uh, then they'll think it's coming um, when in fact it's not. Uh, we've talked about vehicle failures. Um, an interesting one um, is where you've got um, you know, a vehicle that may be running very late um, and there's an intervention, so you put another vehicle on. Um, that's going to uh, create problems with predictions because you will be predicting against one vehicle. You add another vehicle on um, to do a journey. Um, it then the systems inevitably are going to then go. You've got two vehicles logged on to the same same trip. What's going on? And either then drop the predictions or be using predictions from the wrong vehicle. Um, and um, uh, that will um, cause uh, people to think the journey is going to actually come and it never does. Um, and um, the inevitable where you've got um, a journey that's running so late, you need to intervene because you need to run uh, the outward uh, journey. So you truncate it uh, early so that you can uh, try and get back on time. Um, throw everybody off um, you know, people will be expecting that particularly if you've got cross journey predictions going on um, on the bit of route where it's truncated um, and so uh, that most definitely is a ghost bus because it's not going to arrive as i said earlier um Customer misunderstanding um, is quite a common cause when you stand on the street and talk to people. Um, not everybody, probably less than 50% in, in uh, experience, um, actually understand the difference between a, uh, a countdown time and a timetable time on a display, if that's the chosen way of uh, presenting real time. Um, you know, it's electronic, therefore it must be up to date and um, and real. Um, but um, uh, not everybody uh, does understand that. It's a particular problem where you've got, um, for, 
for example, high frequency services and there's a bit of disruption might cause some bus bunching. Um, and so you've got long gaps between um, journeys. That's when you're probably going to be um, cutting things short to, uh, to to manage headway and uh, and and try and get outbound services back on track, for example. Um, you will also get buses that uh, are overtaking each other and so um, times on displays will be flip-flopping between them um, and customers can get very confused when that happens and um, think the bus has gone when it hasn't because they've been looking at the top line um, and then suddenly it's no longer the top line it's you know second or the third line uh, they uh, they think the bus uh, has has passed by even when it hasn't, um, and so that's uh, that's something that we maybe need to think about as an industry about how we present that more effectively, um, because um, the more that we can do to help customers actually understand what's being shown, uh, the less likely they are to think that uh, the bus has uh, has been and gone when it hasn't. Um, then um, a common uh, challenge um, is faulty data. Um, so uh, the information that's in the real-time system isn't up to date um, for lots of reasons. You know, there might have been a short notice timetable change that's not got through onto the system. So actually the times are wrong um but um it's also things like um the bus doesn't actually call at the stop anymore um you know you might have changed the route of the vehicle if the data on the screen is not up to date um, that's going to be saying the bus stops there but it doesn't uh, anymore because of a route change um and that might be because you've got a longer term diversion um, the customer might not know about it because it might not be outside that stop. It might, you know, be half a mile, a mile away, uh, out of sight. Customer doesn't know that unless you've got messaging uh, and appropriate data management uh, in place. Um, you will have that also for short notice diversions, you know, where you can't uh, update the timetable because it, you know, roadworks that were unplanned accidents things like that they're going to cause those diversions uh, so you need to be on your top of your messaging game to help customers understand what's going on and the fact that actually the bus uh, isn't going to go past that stop anymore um one um particularly as we head towards christmas um is worth um thinking about and a cause of um, ghost buses. Uh, quite often you will find that there's a lot of press coverage about ghost buses early in January because people have been experiencing problems over Christmas when um, timetables are changing perhaps every day. Um, if real-time systems aren't kept up to date, then um, buses are never going to uh, arrive because you know it's not a normal Monday to Friday service. Um, and then you get some more uh, technical issues with the data. So, uh, you know, missing bits of data in, in transit exchange files. Um, uh, interesting challenges where um, you might have got um, stops in the wrong order um, and your validation is not picking them up. Um, speeding buses and things like that, they will all uh, potentially cause uh, customers to think a bus is going to go past a stop when it's not or it's going to go past a stop at a time um, but that's the wrong time um, and the big challenge with all of this is it takes uh, people it takes people with skills to keep an eye on uh, managing the data and um, keeping track of it uh, to make sure it's as up to date as you can be um, and that will uh, help mitigate quite a lot of the uh, ghost buses. Um, not only um, ghost buses, uh, there are zombies um, buses. 
Um, I came across the definition the other day of this. Um, uh, it's the undead bus. Um, it appears and then disappears on the uh, on the prediction, um, and then it comes back again when it uh, normally related to diversions. Um, and um, I've seen recently definitions around phantom buses and things like that, but there doesn't seem to be much consensus about some of the other ghoulish uh, types of buses. But um, as we've seen, um, there isn't really a single solution to ghost buses. There are lots of uh, causes, um, lots of things that you need to keep track of and keep an eye on to help uh, sort out. Um, and so um, the, uh, the, the really the, the thing that we need to be doing is, uh, is keeping an eye on lots of things. Um, working out the fact that they're actually happening and admitting that they're happening. Um, uh, it's only probably in the last 12, 18 months the um, transport authorities um, have been really admitting that there's a problem um, and that they need to do something with it. So like with any problem, admitting there is a problem is the first thing to uh, to dealing with it. Um, you then got to um, work out where and when they're happening and identify the cause. Um, there isn't a quick way of doing that, unfortunately. That is a case of uh, looking at customer complaints, looking at behaviour patterns in reporting um, and um, working out um, what the cause is, and then um, actually trying to solve it, you know, fixing the data, uh, fixing um, you know, driver logins, working with drivers to uh, change behaviours, uh, making sure you've got driver duties right, so there are drivers, particularly at uh, changeover points and things like that, um, you know, the right place at the right time. Um, and then um, keeping track of it because this is yet another thing that if you don't keep an eye on it, it's going to come back. Um, you're going to uh, see more of it. Um, it's not a, uh, oh, we fix that, we replace that bit of kit most of the time at least, um, and that solved it. it. This is an ongoing thing um, what you're going to have to uh, to keep an eye on. Um, and so that is a quick run through on uh, ghost buses. Um, we have a, uh, a report on it available through the Arctic um, website um, with a bit more uh, information and background. Um, feel free to, uh, to have a look at that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, are there any questions? I realise that's quite a uh, quick run through. No. OK, you all know how to fix ghost buses. You all know all of the causes and things. Yeah, OK. Uh, if there are no questions or comments and thoughts, then uh, yes, um, we will share the slides uh, and I'll send out a copy of the link to the uh, report as well um, to you So uh, this afternoon. OK, in which case, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, my contact details are on the screen if you didn't have them already. Um, and if you want to talk to us about the work of Artig and uh, what we do um, and how we might be able to uh, uh, work together on things, then uh, please do feel free to get in touch. Uh, thank you all and have a good rest of the day. Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, 
then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank you.